Sapura Energy Berhad is likely to remain the biggest corporate story in Malaysia for some time to come. Tumbling oil prices and a global pandemic led to its fall. The plan to restructure Sapura Energy Berhad to put it back on the right footing was, on paper, well thought out. Formerly known as Sapura Kincana Petroleum Berhad, Sapura Energy Berhad is a Siri, Kimbangan, Selangor-based oil and gas services provider. Sapura Energy employs almost 13,000 people and does business in more than 20 countries, including China, Australia, the United States of America, and many in Western Africa and the Middle East. Once a bright beacon in the oil and gas business, Sapura Energy has fallen so far that it has shocked investors and experts. The fast demise of the corporation illustrates the perils of overexpansion and excessive debt in the volatile energy sector. The collapse of Sapura Energy has had far-reaching consequences for the Malaysian economy and society at large, not just for the company's workers and investors. The company's difficulties have brought into doubt the government's backing for large-scale infrastructure projects and underlined the dangers of relying too much on the energy industry. Investors and experts are left to consider the repercussions of Sapura Energy's demise as the company battles to right the ship. Did it all come down to incompetent leadership and terrible luck, or were there underlying structural problems? And what measures may be taken to prevent a recurrence of such catastrophes? More than five years ago, when oil prices plummeted, Sapura Energy Berhad was one of the largest Malaysian companies to go bankrupt. The collapse in oil prices was a big contributor to Sapura Energy's financial woes. Sapura Energy these profits were significantly harmed, resulting in a considerable rise in its debt levels as a consequence of the worldwide oil price fall. Further losses and a decrease in cash flow have been incurred by Sapura Energy as a result of the pandemic of the COVID-19 virus. Here are some of the reasons which brought Sapura in a bad shape. Oil. The crude oil went above the $85 per barrel level in October 2020, marking a gain of more than 60% year-to-date. But the firm has been struggling. Just three of the previous 10 quarters have been profitable, and in the quarter ending in, the company lost 1.52 billion ringgit on sales of 747.11 million ringgit. It had a profit of 23.74 million ringgit on sales of 1.22 billion ringgit in the same period a year earlier. The business attributed the drop to provisions for expected losses and greater project expenses incurred for specific projects during the second quarter in the notes section of its most recent financials. As of July 31, 2021, it has lost a staggering 6.24 billion ringgit in total. Global expansion problems of Sapura, being present in several countries throughout the world, including Mexico, Brazil, Venezuela, Angola, Equatorial Guinea, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Turkey, India, China, Australia, Japan, Vietnam, and Russia, was seen as a sign of success by Sapura Energy. It had a 30 billion ringgit order book in the middle of 2014, when oil prices were about $110 per barrel, but now it's up to 7.5 billion ringgit. By the end of 2015, however, oil prices had fallen to below $40. As a result, Petronas reduced its spending on oil and gas capital expenditures in favor of finishing the $27 billion, ringgit 89.3 billion ringgit at the time. Penjerang Integrated Complex under Johor's Refinery and Petrochemical Integrated Development Project. As a result of lack of investments domestically in O and G, we had to move overseas. Anywar explains of the challenges encountered in international markets. We lacked global credibility at the time. We traveled to India and Mexico with customers whose needs we were still figuring out. These were not global powerhouses like Exxon or Shell, but rather smaller regional concerns. It's all a normal part of the educational process. But Sapura Energy made significant purchases, notably as Cedral laid tender rate business in April 2013 for $2.9 billion ringgit as it dealt with challenges in international markets and adjusted to the operating climate. Buying the Malaysian assets of Newfield Exploration Co. in February 2014 for $895.9 million increased its borrowing significantly. Newfield's Malaysian assets, SEB Upstream Sinbad, were sold to OMV Exploration and Production Gem in a 50 50 split in November 2018 for $540 million. Sapura Energy executives think the firm has benefited greatly from the February 2014 asset purchase. Bad acquisitions, especially drilling assets, the substantial purchase of Seadrill's drilling capabilities, in particular, is often cited as the reason for Sapura Energy's losses. Sapura Energy paid $2.9 billion ringgit in cash shares 
and a placement exercise to purchase Seedrill's Reagan drilling assets in 2013. Sapura Energy now controls 55% of the international tender rate market because of the purchase. Drilling efforts suffered greatly as a result of the purchase and the subsequent drop in crude oil prices. But Sapura Energy had six tender rigs before the transaction, five of which were owned and operated in a 51% joint venture with Cedro, controlled by O and G and shipping tycoon Joe and Fredrickson. By combining with Kenkana, Kilometers 1, the other tender rigs became totally owned. Sapura Energy purchased the remaining 49% ownership stake in the existing five semi-tender rigs from Cedro as part of the Cedro deal. Sapura Energy is the biggest owner of tender rigs in the world now that it has the most active tender rigs and the most recently constructed tender rigs. Listed on the New York Stock Exchange and headquartered in Norway, Cedro Lady has twice filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the United States. In 2014, Sapura Energy paid $895 million to acquire the Malaysian assets of Newfield. Meanwhile, in FY 2016, Sapura Energy recorded a loss of $172.5 million after it forfeited a 10% deposit on a proposal to acquire Petronas Vietnam business for $400 million. It is important to remember that both Cheryl and the old Sapura Crest had extensive merger and acquisition histories previous to the exercise that led to their eventual merger, M&A, once known as Crest Petroleum. Sapir Crest is now a subsidiary of the financially troubled Renong Group. In 2003, Sapura Telecommunications paid $105 million to the Renong Group for a 38.6% ownership in Crest Petroleum Bed which it subsequently renamed Sapura Crest Petroleum. Merger structuring saddled Sapura Energy with debt. Large cash dividends to shareholders were made possible by taking out loans from banks as part of the Sapura Crest Kincana merger, which was designed to benefit the owners of both companies. In order to provide cash distributions to Sapura Crest and Kincana shareholders as part of the restructuring process, the newly amalgamated business incurred additional debt of 1.96 billion ringgit in bank borrowings. Both firms share shareholders got cash payouts as part of the deal, with Sapir Crest investors receiving $875.08 million and Kenkana investors receiving $968.69 million for their participation. Sharol had a 40% ownership in Sapura Crest. Therefore, in addition to his shares in the combined business Sapura, he would have earned an estimated $350 million in cash. On July 31, 2012, the amalgamated entity's first quarterly financial statement, it reported 5.33 billion ringgit in gross borrowings and 1.46 billion ringgit in cash. Even before it began numerous large acquisitions, its net gearing ratio was 60% net debt of 3.87 billion ringgit versus equity of 6.45 billion ringgit. Huge impairments. Total impairments by Sapura Energy between 2016 and 2022 amounted to a staggering 14.9 billion ringgit. It seems that two-thirds of the impairments, or around 9.8 billion ringgit, were associated with the drilling activities. When broken down into segmental asset classes, vessels E and C and E and P accounted for another 3.9 billion ringgit, while other categories received 1.15 billion ringgit. A detailed examination of Sapura Energy's segmental profit and loss reveals that the drilling segment is certainly the primary contributor to the company's losses. This division lost a total of 8.62 billion ringgit before taxes between 2015 and 2022 when drilling was divided independently, whereas E and C lost a total of 4.05 billion ringgit before taxes over the same time period. The downturn in oil prices, bad acquisitions, and the company's significant capital expenditure needs and the merger structure have all contributed to the downfall of Sapura. Notwithstanding difficulties, the business is working to improve its financial status and is aiming to do so in the future years. This was all about the downfall of Sapura. Hope you liked this video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. See you in the next one.